We may not think of it, but it is strange to be human. We go through life figuring out who we are, discovering what this means on the backdrop of existence. This may make things more confusing when we realize that everyone experiences these oddities, and in turn are just as lost. Many misunderstandings between people may boil down to lapses in existential understanding. Even people that seem to flow through life with little consideration of this are still affected by it. How strange it must be to be you or to be anyone at all. When interacting with others lost in this haze of existential quandary, how do we quantify good actions from bad? Even when acting in solitude, are there such things as right and wrong? Where do these ideals come from? The reality is that this question is as old as time. There doesn't seem to be a satisfying answer. Perhaps there never will be, and there most definitely won't be in this video. But let's talk about it anyway. Right and wrong seems to remain largely based on cultural perspective one that does not change much from person to person among a single population, but it does have outliers and extremism, as does everything. As a people, we tend to ostracize these moral radicals, imprisoning them and otherwise shunning them from society. But where do these morals come from? God? Or is there something about us or the way we're raised that implants these ideals into us? What about the concept of crime and punishment, actions of value and praise? Who makes the decision of what's right and wrong? Who decides what is a punishment and what is praise? Why is hell the punishment and why is heaven the reward? Nirvana and freedom, prison and damnation. And what about embracing the darker sides of us like in the Purge series and why the concept makes so much sense? Why is it so easy for people to become corrupted as they grow older? Is it the lead that was in the atmosphere when they were young? Is it just a change in the times? Or is it simply just an ache that wears us down? It is to be assumed that there is purity in birth. A newborn infant is without bias, prejudice, or more complex ideals. Do they experience morality? Are they capable of understanding their own impact? Or is there something about becoming a member of the strangeness that imbues the concept of right and wrong? We are typically raised with fantastical words and stories, but tragically imperfect lives. What is a child to decide when they hear mommy and daddy shouting while they watch Disney? Which are they to believe? The wholesome and fantastical stories they're told? or the cynical and depressing reality that starkly contrasts them. Let's dive deeper here. Children's media promotes love and good nature, right? Well, let's see. Girls' toys are covered in hearts and are either a baby doll or a pristinely inaccurate depiction of female beauty standards. Boys' toys are just guns and mothers' soon-to-be-dead sons. Real good-natured, if you ask me. Is it good that we're taught differently? Is it good that these ideals are baked into us so early? Is there a deeper, manipulative, for-profit, ulterior motive here? What about all the points where bad things are promoted, baked into us at a young age? The phrase, boys will be boys, is dangerous, as women around the world are very well aware of. And what about the concept of gossip being promoted among young girls? Heartless rumors and lies spread because it's baked into us. Where do these things fall in our designations of right and wrong? And why are there no punishments for these things? And even if there are punishments, why not nip these problems at the source? It is even more interesting, the fact that religions and first world governments largely promote free will and will of the people, except in the cases that these things produce an outcome those powers don't like. Nobody asks to be born. Yet we are all faced with the same ultimatum eventually. We're all human, experiencing the same strangeness, yet we all still must fall in line. Be a human, like all other humans, for fear of being an individual. 
be like everyone else, or wish you were nobody. Not to mention it's all meaninglessly complex. We're all teetering on the edges of freedom and jail, nirvana, or damnation. This all fringes on the idea of good and evil, or perhaps simply more on control. We believe hell to be bad, and heaven or other interpretations of the afterlife to be good. But are they just simply impossible to get to? Are the qualifications imposed too strict, like presented at The Good Place? I highly recommend it, by the way. Are we provided these moral ideals by God? or by a natural facet of our own existence? And are God or the government bastardizing these facets for control? And if God or those in power didn't impose these rules, would we still follow them simply by our own volition? Are our tenets communal and powerful enough to withstand anarchy? Why do we rely on the ideals of religion to shape our morals? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not perform adultery. These are rudimentary rules in pretty much every religion, but they are also easily gleamed from common sense. No one would want to be killed or be a victim of any kind. Then why are religions providing us with ideals we already have? What if they didn't? What if religion didn't hold the afterlife over our heads like candy over a naughty child's head? Would we still think these things are bad? Or would people go out killing and fucking whatever and whomever they want? In the end, I cannot answer any of these questions for you. Nor should I try to. They are far too large and at the same time far too personal. Though it is possible should enough people agree on something for change to be enacted. So please, feel free to use this video as a starting point for a conversation. In the comments, with your loved ones, random people on the street, or even your local government officials. Life is so endlessly complicated, with themes and characters like a never-ending story full of repeating climaxes and resolutions. But don't let that make you lose yourself, or the ideals you hold dear, even if they are contrary to what people want you to think. And as long as they don't harm anyone, that's important too. There really isn't a solid answer for any of this only what you believe. We are born a blank slate. We are not born good or evil. We are all born human.